Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Dalen Yanagida and we, brought, we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. You may also subscribe to our programs and getting our mailing list there as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people and our guests share with us their journey to building successful businesses right here at home. In the Think Tech studio with us today is Melissa Pavlicek, President of Hawaii Public Policy Advocates. Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I know that so many people recognize your face because <laughs> as, as you make your rounds around the state capitol, around the ledge, so I know that you're not an unfamiliar face, but I really would love to hear about how Melissa got started um, in, in the field of of advocacy and, and lobbying. Thank you so much for asking me. Our company is 15 years old and we started it really um, because we saw a need in the community to have a voice at the legislature. I remember uh, working as an attorney and attending a women's leadership conference where I saw lots of women entrepreneurs and they were often complaining about laws and regulations, fees, taxes, and other things that kind of made them mad. And I really thought it might be a business opportunity to help people have a voice in making policy. And so, so often people feel like politics or legislative work is something they would never want to do. And whenever you see people saying there's something they never want to do, you definitely know you'll always have a job. So. <laughs> you found the niche. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you filled it. Um, but how was that journey? It, you know, I worked at the legislature as a staff member, and that is actually where I met my husband of 25 years now. He also worked there. And, you know, I was speaking about the need for businesses to have a voice at the Capitol. But similarly, legislators, they need to hear good information, good, reliable, trustworthy information. And they're eager for community members to talk to them in a way that they can process and make good decisions. And I really do believe that they're there for you know good reasons and so often they get accused of making decisions without having good reasons but it's really on us out here in the community to give them you know all the facts the data the evidence that they need to make sure that they make good policy decisions so on um, the business and why show we often like to ask business owners entrepreneurs like yourself um, what were some of the barriers to getting started I mean one of the more uh, amusing ones is when I left uh, working at a law firm, people in the law field said to me, like, what do you mean you're going to start your own business? You're going to have to buy your reams of paper from Costco yourself. And I'm like, I think I could handle that. Um, but there really is not much of a barrier to becoming a lobbyist or an advocate. And many people do it on a part-time basis or for free because they have something that they want to do, um, a passion that they want to express. And I think there's a, a misperception that most lobbyists would do or say anything because a client hired them to do it. I really feel it's important to advocate with integrity and to make sure that I only accept clients where I know, like, and trust what they're saying is true and I can carry that message and help them. The only part of my job is really speaking on behalf of organizations. Another really important part of my job is to help them know how to frame their messages themselves and to empower them so that they know they can have a voice in making good policy decisions too, especially for nonprofit organizations. So often nonprofit organizations are comprised of individual small businesses and they come together because nobody has the bandwidth or the time to be able to go up and, and spend a whole day at the state capitol waiting for a bill to be heard. But when they come together and can pool their resources, they can have a better voice. And so it's really working with those businesses to help them understand the process. For example, this morning I was over at the Honolulu City Council and it was a packed hearing room. And just getting to sit next to some people who hadn't testified before, just to let them know you have to sign in. And just because you submitted testimony online doesn't mean that the council members will know that you want to be a speaker. So little things like that can help a lot. So how does someone figure all of that out? Is that something that HPPA helps with? Right. Well, I try to um, be open and educate people regardless of whether or not they would ever consider hiring a lobbyist for themselves. Um, because 
I'm a citizen too, and I want to make sure that there are good policy decisions. I have two teenage children, and I hope Hawaii is a better place for them. So I do share a lot of information, and the state legislative website and the Honolulu City Council website, as well as the city council websites of the other neighbor islands, are really a wealth of information. Gone are the days when we have to go down and get a stack of paper to find out what's going on. You just with a click, you can find out quite a bit about what's on the agenda, who else is testifying, what's happening with any particular measure. But um, kind of like even before that, usually when I meet with people who are interested or, or ask if they might be a fit for working with us, they often have the idea, I want to change a law or I want to pass a bill. And when I talk to them, I ask them questions to find out, do you even need to change the law? Is it something that can be done with a state agency or through rules? Is it something that you can work with people on and talk informally so that you don't have to go through a full-blown process? Every year, there are about 3,000 bills introduced and only about two to 300 pass. So if you're relying on your bill getting through, it might be a little challenging and you try to find other strategies for accomplishing what you want to do. But oftentimes they do want something. And so we try to look at, has this been done before? What are the key ways we could get it done? Some of the considerations that we look at are, you know, who would benefit from this change? So trying to find other stakeholders and can we interest them in getting involved in this? Who would oppose it? And can we address their concerns before we ever go talk to a legislator and ask them to take up our cause? We want to go in with all of that information so that they know what they might be getting themselves into. Is there a point at which your consultancy begins? Is it, hey, I, I think I, I want to change this law, and then you talk them through. Is that where the relationship starts? Or I mean, the relationship ideally, starts? I would okay. love if all of our relationships started that way. But sometimes it happens when I'm sitting in a hearing next to somebody who's there for a bill, and they're sort of tearing out their hair because they don't know what's happening next and they ask me if I can help them and often I do because if I believe in it I just believe in it and that might end up being a client relationship down the line. Well I've had the honor and the opportunity of following you around the Capitol um, during the legislative session and I mean it you definitely I mean you're a subject matter expert but more than that you you have passion and you you literally show that you have passion <laughs> for what's happening in this process. Wearing your heart on your sleeve is maybe not always the best strategy for a lobbyist. Having a poker face is oh, okay. maybe a job <laughs> qualification, and I'm not sure that I have it. But I know I brought some photos with you, and maybe we could take a quick I look would at love those, that. and that could kind of show us some of the things. So this is a photo of um, two community members meeting with the state legislator, uh, Representative Tom Brower, who has a very colorful office there, but you can see, you know, he's really engaged in the conversation and they're learning what's, what, you know, what, what's his passion and then they can kind of tailor their message to try to match up with some of the things that interest him and you'll see Darth Vader, I think, in the background <laughs> mm -hmm. there, but um, each legislator has their own unique style and things that they're interested in reflecting their community and so trying to tap into it on a human level to try to really relate to them is part of it. We, I think we could go on to a next one. Um, I know we have a couple other photos. Um, so another way that we try to get the legislators to know um, about what we're doing is to ask them to recognize either with a proclamation or a certificate a special day. And this happened to be Give Kids a Smile Day, which is a free clinic every year that dentists put on. And these are some dentists who are there to receive that acknowledgement sometimes this happens on the floor of the legislature or and I know Dalen you've been there when these things are going on but that way all the legislators who are sitting there ready to do business are, are gaining awareness of what your organization does. I know we have um, yet another slide if we could put that mm -hmm. one up. This, this is, is you in action, right? <laughs> this actually isn't me, and I, I think it, it kind of looks like me a little bit, but it is a community member, and um, this was the first time she ever testified at a, at a Senate committee hearing, and some of these senators are no longer in office, and I feel like that looks a little intimidating, and it is sort of reflective of what it feels like to be testifying for the first time at the Capitol. But this um, particular community member did a really effective job, and she was able to convince these legislators to change a bill. And so I love this photo because it shows how one person can really make a difference. And I think we have one more. 
Yeah, I mean, often we talk about trying to develop a strategy or put all the policy points down, and this is a good picture of a group um, going through some strategic planning. And I, I like to put this photo at the end because it's sort of a never-ending process. We have a two-year legislative biennium, and so going into 2020, this will be the second year, and many of the bills that were considered last year will still be alive. So it's not like we always get the luxury of starting here at the beginning and do strategic planning. Sometimes after we've gone through a legislative session, we start to strategize for the next one. And so I think that's what that photo represents. I think just having um, someone who knows the ropes and knows this process and the, the fact that you know the, the bill is still alive into the next, next legislative session, I mean, I, I wouldn't know that if, you know, if you didn't share a process and, and guide us through that, I, I, that's just not common knowledge. So I, I think that the service that HPPA provides to various organizations is just so valuable, right? Because everybody has um, a message or an opinion, just don't know how to, to get it heard. Um, I also know that P HPPA does other things besides advocacy right. at the ledge. What are some of those things? Right, so many times groups will go up to the Capitol um, and I noticed that they could use some additional help besides just uh, advocating or uh, articulating their message. And sometimes that meant helping them convene a meeting or work on their bylaws. And because we are attorneys and we have some experience with that, we started taking on a couple of our organizations as their executive director. And that really has been a good compliment. There's this myth that nonprofit organizations can't lobby, and it's not really true. Organi nonprofit organizations, even charitable organizations, can do some lobbying, a small amount compared to the rest of their work. But they can do a considerable amount of advocacy and educating. So those things really work together well. And if we don't have our nonprofit community, which is often comprised of small businesses and, and business professionals, advocating at the Capitol, that's an important voice that's missing from the discussion. Um, I think I need an education on the difference between advocacy, being an advocate, a lobbyist, and all those different parts that come together, and definitely what HPPA does. Um, but we need to go to a break. So when we come back, I'm hoping that um, you could give me that education <laughs> as well as everyone else. We are going to that break. This is Business in Hawaii. We'll see you back here shortly. Aloha, my name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us, and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. With us today is Melissa Pavlicek of Hawaii Public Policy Advocates. I am so excited to have you here because I think I have questions of my own. Um, before we went to break, we were talking about the difference between advocacy and lobbying. Um, you know, there's a couple different uh, definitions. And for small businesses, really the one that they need to be thinking about is the definition of lobbying, which really means for pay. So um, if you advocate for, on behalf of other organizations and receive compensation, you have to register with the State Ethics Commission. So as a volunteer, if you are a small business owner and you volunteer for the Chamber of Commerce or the National Federation of Independent Business, you don't have to register as a lobbyist. But if you turn around and pay an advocate such as myself, then I would have to register. So that's a key definition. And then for nonprofit organizations, they have some IRS definitions they need to worry about. So for them, lobbying, again, means for pay, 
And it also means on a specific issue. So if you are advocating, I'm in favor of Bill 100 or I oppose Bill 100, that will start to add up to how much lobbying you can do if you're a nonprofit. But you have an unlimited amount of advocacy and education. So you can say, I support small business or I support early learning or I support education for Native Hawaiians. Those are all education advocacy on issues and you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about your nonprofit status. So in a, in, while the legislatures are in office, when they have hearings, anybody can submit testimony, is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And sometimes they're very long hearings, but um, you know, the, the hearing itself is just a small part of what the legislators are doing to find out what's happening with a bill. So an issue might relate to um, a small business fee or tax. And so the legislators will be thinking about that before they even have a bill written and introduce it. And then when a hearing is scheduled, they'll be receiving and, and reviewing all the written testimony. They'll also accept meetings in their office. You can call and request a meeting. Um, of course, they can't necessarily meet with everybody on every issue. So that's when it helps to kind of know who your geographic area legislators are. So calling up and saying, I live in your district, would you be willing to meet with me for a few minutes or have a staff member meet with me? It's very powerful. And there's such an easy way to find on the state legislative website, up in the right hand corner, you can type in your street name and find out who your legislators are. And that's often a good place to start. The legislature is also organized by committees. So finding a topic committee that relates to what you're working on, so for small businesses, we often go before the economic development committees and talking to those committee leaders. And then by the time you get to the hearing, they know who you are and they kind of know a little bit about what you want to say. So that really helps because I think there's some statistic like somebody has to hear something seven times before it sinks in. Mm -hmm. So you want to really make sure, yeah, or more. <laughs> you said it at least that many times. Mm -hmm. So um, for um, HPPA, we try to work with our organizations so that we find out we match up, you know, who is the messenger, so who is going to go to the meetings, who's going to testify, who's going to be the face of the issue along with the message and make sure those are a good fit and then it will um, help communicate the position a lot better and be much more memorable. Nice. So when business owners, entrepreneurs have an opinion about a topic, they can go to their legislators and have their voice heard. but they would call upon you or any of your staff at HPPA to represent them when they need that extra guidance and perhaps understanding who the best person to talk to is. Right. They could, but usually a be the best place to start is to see what organizations are already doing that work. So what I like to do is if somebody asks me something about an issue that I haven't worked on before, I go on the legislative website and do a few keyword searches and look at those bills and who are the other people and the other organizations that testified. And then if you can find one, so it might be the Alzheimer's Association or the Arthritis Association, they've been testifying on a bill, you know, connect with them or see if they have a public meeting, if you can go to it and kind of learn what the positions are and get some colleagues to go up because that can be very persuasive when you're at the Capitol when it's more than just one person. But never underestimate the power of one person to make a difference. Just like we saw in that photo of mm -hmm. one person testifying, it can be very compelling. And I, this is why I love what I do, because I really feel like I can make a difference. And it's so easy to sit outside the process. Um, there is a song uh, that's very popular about how we're waiting for the world to change. Um, but I feel like if we wait for the world to change, there's just not enough time. We have to get in there and be part of that change. And nice. so. Um, I've had also the opportunity to hang out in your office with your staff, <laughs> and you folks do so many things. I would love to hear about the plethora of things that, that HPPA does. Right. Well, specifically for our lobbying clients, as I was saying, it's not just being their voice at the Capitol. Really, the majority of the work is back um, with them and trying to help articulate what are the compelling stories that they can tell to humanize their issue, get some data and research. Are there any governmental reports? And we go down to the Legislative Reference Bureau Library, which has a fantastic wall of news clippings back from the 1970s on every topic you can imagine and, and do some homework. Um, 
really trying to do some stakeholder analysis. Who else is working in this area? Can we go to some neighborhood board meetings and stir up some interest and get some more people involved in this? Can we help write some letters to the editor or see if the, any of the stakeholders would be willing to write an opinion editorial that can be published in the paper? People who can get some media training and be interviewed on programs like this one and really work to build capacity so that when the organization is ready to launch their message, we can really find champions in the legislature and the policymakers and really find someone who will be passionate and like-minded and, and advance the issues. So those um, are some of the what things. are some of the other things that you folks guide your clients through? Well, I think being prepared for opposition is definitely one of them and trying to go through some mock interviews or mock hearings so that people can be prepared for some tough questions because the last thing that you want to do is say the wrong information at a legislative hearing or promise something that you'll never be able to deliver because that will haunt you for a long time. So really practicing and being prepared and doing your homework. And then really the goal is not so much to just win the battle or make sure you got through this particular hearing or got a bill passed, but you really want to have a long strategic view. And sometimes issues of importance take a long time. It might take one year, two years, five years to have a bill passed. But in the meantime, if you're building up support and building colleagues, you're making progress towards your goal. And so a lot of the work that we do is trying to come up with measures for those things so that we're not just, did you win today or lose, but did you make progress towards a goal and is it going to stick? Is that bill or that idea going to last for a long time? And can we measure you know, change by some positive steps towards reaching a goal? Sounds like the work that you do with your clients builds a very long lasting relationship. Do you, do you <laughs> Often it does mm -hmm. and I think many of our organizations have been with us for over 10 years and that also makes it fun and we get to know people on a human level and really have some good relationships and friendships and similarly with some of the elected officials you know there's just people often ask me what does the legislature think and there's 76 legislators <laughs> on any given day and they have different ideas and as you saw from some of the pictures some of their offices reflect their colorful characters and so um, it really is a, a great opportunity to get to know people and to make a difference in our community. I would be one of those people who would call you and say so what's going on in the legislature <laughs> without realizing that there is just so much going on there that you know it, it does get um, pretty one of the things that um, people often don't think about when they think about advocacy is it's not necessarily just the Capitol building. It's not just the legislature or the governor's office or the state agencies, but using strategies with the judiciary. So we don't actively, even though we're lawyers, litigate cases pertaining to our, our bills or issues that we work on, but our clients do. And so we to think through is this something that a court a recent court case might affect we don't need this bill anymore or now we do need a bill because it was decided in a certain way based on the current law or is this bill even valid so there every year there's bills that uh, violate the state constitution's prohibition on having two topics in a bill so anytime you see a bill that has the word and in it you kind of start to ask yourself is that really one topic or is it two topics so you know, things wow. like that. Having, having a law background is helpful, but not required, but definitely helpful. So what's next for HPPA? You know, we're celebrating an anniversary of our company this year. My husband and I are the co-owners of the business. We're celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary. <gasps> and uh, I think we're just looking forward to doing some good work and continuing to, to help be the voice of some of our clients and, and small businesses. What kind of advice do you have for our small business owners and our entrepreneurs out there who really want to have a voice on certain issues? Just, I just, yeah, I think it's so easy to say, I wish they would leave me alone. And, you know, I, I understand that sentiment, but I think the legislators, doing themselves and legislators a disservice because their voice is important and legislators welcome it. And so finding the time, making the time either to personally develop a, a relationship with a key elected official or supporting another effort through a trade organization, it, it's really important. And I think my tip would be not to let others do be your voice, but to really participate in the process 
Make sure that you vote, make sure that you have a say in who, who is serving as our elected leaders, and um, don't leave those opportunities to others. Um, so for our business owners and entrepreneurs who do want to seek your services um, to, to help them with that voice or th that guidance, how can they find you? Of course, we have a website at Hawaii Public Policy Advocates, and um, it's easily searchable, and my phone number and email is on that, and uh, we, we welcome conversation. Or hang around the state capitol long enough, <laughs> and we'll see either you or one of your staff go by, right? <laughs> or think tech. Or, yes, or think tech. Thank you so much. Um, we are out of time, but I wanted to thank Melissa for joining us today, and a huge thank you to the production staff here in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m., and we look forward to seeing you here next week.